Hey there, welcome. It's me, your host, Amy from Pen Adventure, and welcome to the channel again. Today, we're going to talk everyday carry fountain pens, or ADC. Everything about them. Let's go. I know you hear this all the time. It is a great everyday carry fountain pen or it's an ADC pen, or it's a great workhorse pen. Well, what does it mean? I think this will be a video, including for those that are considering veterans of the hobby, and also people that are just joining in, or maybe have a one fountain pen or two fountain pens, and it is great to have a strategy behind your collection. I don't consider myself a uh, collector only for the sake of it, just collecting fountain pens and putting them into a display case or into a window and leaving them there just for people to watch them. No, I do use 99% of my writing instruments. There are a couple of ones, I believe one or two that I'm not using and the single reason that I'm not using those pants is because they're made in a cream celluloid and I just don't want to stay in them. Using fountain pens comes with a toll or a price. Most of the times, the only thing that you need to worry about is carrying your fountain pen with you. If you are in an environment like this one on a desk, I think it's very easy and you can have any single pen that you can put on a desk and you can enjoy it without having too many risks. But when you do carry the fountain pen outside or at the office at work with you, there is some things that you need to take into consideration because you will have certain problems. Hear me out, just don't laugh. All fountain pen peoples are geeky and I consider myself as well a geek and I just love to talk about fountain pens every day, every time. So I was thinking about doing videos like this one just to put out there some of my thoughts and what a fountain pen needs to check from the list in order to have a much more practicality aspect in carrying that fountain pen with you. So I have here an array of fountain pens, new ones, old ones, collectible ones, um, you name it. I want to show you some of the things that you can take into consideration about carrying the fountain pen with you no matter where you go and probably this will help you a lot to understand better what you will face once you take a fountain pen outside or with you and it will make you decide upon which font pen you want to buy and which one you don't want to buy or to own. One of the most basic things that you need to take into consideration is the shape of the font pen. So I have here a lot of examples and I want to show you. Don't go for something super super big and huge. First of all you need something that will be comfortable, easy to get out of the pen case or to put on your desk. It's just an advice. At the end of the day, you can take it or leave it. But in my experience, big weighty fountain pens are not very good candidates for everyday writers or everyday carrying fountain pens. So we have here something like this, which is a very beautiful fountain pen. One of one, old win. And uh, well, would you? <laughs> Did you see that? I was just about to drop it. So yeah, it is very important. A fountain pen that is used, you may drop it. You may drop it on the desk, like 10 centimeters height. But when you take it outside and you have 20, 30, half a meter, one meter, when you drop a fountain pen from that height, you most likely do damage. Would you like to have a big, expensive and very very irreplaceable fountain pen with you if you drop it? I think not. Moving forward, I would call something in between medium and oversized to be a great size for everyday carry fountain pens. 
And here we can mention a few uh, sizes. For example, I would go to a uh, Homo sapiens, which is a good size fond pen, a Momento Zero Grande size. Take into consideration the fact that you will need to put this fond pen on your desk. Uh, you may clip it uh, onto your shirt or anything like this. So size does matter. Go for medium size fond pens. As for shape, I would dare to say that anything that is very, very odd in regards of shape, it is not very comfortable to daily carry. So for example, we have here a stipula and this is a gladiator. Take a look at this. This will be very, very uncomfortable to clip on your shirt. You need to take this front pan out from um, like for example, one of those uh, ring uh, cases, if you own one, and it will snag. In regards of shape, I would go to something which is round and it doesn't have any uh, points that are sticking out, any sharp ridges. This will help you a lot. Definitely go with something that has a clip. A fountain pen like this one, we have a Sailor Wanter. This doesn't have a clip. Imagine having this fountain pen on your desk or uh, at the park, putting it side by side you on the park bench or something like this. And imagine having this rolling off and falling down. Hmm, you don't want to go there. So yeah, go with something that has a clip. Also, if you go with something with clip, choose a functional clip. For example, I will have a fountain pen like this one. So this is a Momento Zero made out in resin, going with something like this. And uh, you want to have the security of having the fountain pen clipped by the shirt itself. So if you go with a clip, I don't know what to say. Go for a functional one. Don't go with something that is very, very fancy, but it is unpractical. If we go one step further, I would tell you that if you are using the font pen in a office environment and you take notes with it and you need to remove the cap every single time, if you have a font pen that has a lot of threads to the cap, I would advise you to go with something that is more easy to uncap like the hook safe lock mechanism. And this will be very, very handy to you. Overall, it will make your writing experience more pleasant because it's very easy to uncap this pen. You just need to have a quarter of a twist and you uncap the pen. So if you constantly take notes, paying attention to someone that is speaking and having to take notes, I think if you go with something that has a lot, a lot of threads, like for example, this Onoto Spitfire, imagine going like this, okay, I'm gonna write a word or two, yeah, take that, I need to do that, okay, let me cap it, go, 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 yeah, I'm done, okay, oh, shoot, I gotta write something. If you do this so, so many times a day, it will get boring and you will blame the fountain pen for it. So no, the fountain pen has nothing to do with this. Just use something that has a very easy uncapping system. Moving further, don't go for something that has a very, very thick and chunky section. Go with something that is not faceted in regards of shape of the section because that in time will uh, make your hand fatigue if you write a lot and uh, don't go with something that is very thick, like for example, uh, this Delta Roma Imperiale. This has a huge, huge section. I mean, take a look at this. It's nice, it's interesting if you want to use it for a sentence or two, but imagine having this fountain pen to write notes with it. It will be unlikely to write more than uh, half an hour without cursing and blaming the fountain pen for being uncomfortable, making your hands crampy in the process and stuff like this. Go with something that is very comfortable, very easy to use, and it has a decent size section. Don't go with the skinny, skinny ones because the effect is the same. Your hands will still try to find uh, a point where to grip the entire fountain pen and it will be the same like with a super, super chunky section. 
Okay, moving further, we have the filling system. Don't go with something that has a lot of uh, intricacy. Go with something simple. A cartridge converter. For example, you run out of ink. You can have a bottle of ink or a traveling ink well with you. It's very easy to just unscrew, draw some ink and let it go. But if you have something that is more complicated, like for example, a uh, vacuumatic filling system, like the one that's on the Bologna Extra, you need to find a very, very deep ink bottle. You need to extend a rod, put your finger, plunge, and wait until the ink comes into the sack and it's complicated. It's a nice pen, it's interesting, but I don't see it as being a inviting fountain pen to use every single day. You got idea. Go with something that is very simple. I would consider cartridge converter or piston. That's easy, you just need to draw and voila. I've covered a lot of the usual things. I would consider material as well, because having a fountain pen carried with you, it will get put into the case if you have one, or it will be thrown into your bag, or it will be clipped to your shirt. Probably what I would recommend you to carry with you is a fountain pen made from resin. Resin is stable, it is very unlikely to break if you are taking care of your fountain pen. I wouldn't advise you to go for something that's like this, Rushi, or which is made from uh, a very rare and precious celluloid. Imagine dropping a celluloid fountain pen and you know there isn't anyone that can fix it. It will break your heart. So go with something that is made in resin. In my experience, one of the most resilient materials for a fountain pen that is a great everyday carry pen would be the Bronze Age Homo Sapiens, which is made out in lava material. That is basically almost unbreakable. You can take that fountain pen with you. Let's say you make a mistake and you drop that fountain pen. It will scratch a little bit, but it will look still okay. Still a nice pen with a scar, but it will work and you can trust that pen, it will write. With that one, you have the other factors, the filling system, which is the power vac filling system from Visconti, which is a bit more complicated. If you have a full filled with ink, I think you can handle with that fountain pen and use it without remaining stranded without ink, to say so. Those were some of the points that I would advise you to take into the consideration when you are thinking about getting a fountain pen that you want to daily carry with you, or you just want to use it in a working environment, or if you travel, or if you take it out into the park to draw, to write. At the end of the day, those are just my advice. You can take them, or not. This is what I've experienced in my years of being a fountain pen addict, geek, collector, lover, user of fountain pens, and all of the above. Thank you for spending your time with me on the Pen Venture YouTube channel. Let me know if this video was useful. If it was useful, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the algorithm and YouTube and everything. It will simply help a lot. If you want to support me doing videos like this, subscribe to the Pen Venture YouTube channel. You can do that right now. If you're not subscribed, click here and turn the notification bell on. And if you want to see more quality content from Penventure and myself, check this video right here. My name is Amy and I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care, stay safe, stay strong, ride on, enjoy, bye-bye.